Hi, I'm Tom McPhee, and you know the long-term benefits of consistently saving and reducing your debt carry some tremendous value and rewards for you. No wonder so many financial gurus have tapped into this market, encouraging people like you to pay off your debt, pay cash for everything, live within your means, and save on a consistent basis. But the financial wizards and gurus are only sharing with you part of the story. So why don't you and I explore the rest of the story together like Paul Harvey always used to do in his newscast. Let's suppose that you earn $2,000 a month. Now if you earn more than that, just add some zeros to this number. As the numbers don't make any difference in this scenario, it's just a concept, not a math problem. If you make less than that, just divide by two until you get the number you like, like 1,000 or 500. Again, it's a concept, not a math problem. Now, according to ancient financial wisdom, George Clausen wrote about this in The Richest Man in Babylon. You should pay yourself 10% of everything you make, use 20% of what you make to pay your creditors with, and you should live off the other 70%. So here we've divided it up, $200 to savings, $400 to creditors, and $1,400 a month to living expenses. Now, if you decide to live on less than 70% in your attempts to get ahead faster by saving more or to pay off your creditors faster, then historically what's going to happen to you is that you're going to be like someone that's been put on a too strict of a diet. You're going to end up binging and you're going to end up with a greater debt than what you started with. So please, just trust the ancient wisdom of the 10-20-70 rule and don't try to save more or pay down debt faster than what you can really afford. Now, if you follow this advice, this is what's gonna happen. On a $10,000 debt at 12%, it's gonna take you 29 months to eliminate that debt. You'll end up spending $11,564.88, and $1,564.88 of that is profit for your creditor. Your savings, though, will also grow because you're contributing $200 a month and it's compounding at 2%. And so it grows and you have $5,972.51 at the end of two years. But that's not what most financial planners and advisors tell you to do. In fact, is the gurus tell you to eliminate debt faster. And the only way really to do this is to take it from your savings. And when you do that, this is what happens. So you stop, they encourage you to stop contributing to your 401k, your IR, your 403b plan, or maybe they tell you to give up your coffee or your, your, uh, the, your vacations or things that you need to do to rejuvenate yourself. But if they're telling you to do that, it must be a whole lot better than the conventional method that's been around for centuries. Well, let's explore and see what really happens. They're absolutely right. You will pay off your debt faster. You'll pay it off in 19 months, not 29 months. And you'll only pay $994.57 extra instead of $1,564.88 extra. So what's the difference here? Where's the catch? Well, let's look on the other side. At 19 months, you've put $0 towards savings. And even though it might compound at two or even 100%, you still have zero dollars at 19 months in savings. So to be real honest now with the gurus, we have to allow them to compare apples to apples. We're only looking at a 19 month to a 29 month comparison. So let's look at what happens at 20 month 29. Now, in the last 10 months, between when you paid your debt off you're able to contribute $600 to savings. And in the next 10 months, that's gonna to grow to be $6,457.44. So now you have about $500 more at month 29 than when we did it the conventional way. But I don't like either or scenarios. That is because either or scenarios destroy your wealth by keeping you inside the box. Consider the following. 
Instead of just saving $200 a month, what would happen if you paid a participating life insurance policy premium with that $200? Here's what would happen. After 12 months, you'd have paid $2,400 to the life insurance. You'd have $1,383 of cash values, and you would have a death benefit of over $78,000 that you could leave to someone you love should something tragic happen to you. So what do we do? How do we use this? Well, you can borrow that $1,300, and when you do, the insurance company is going to charge you $66.48, and the rest of that money then can be passed over into your own possession, and with that, if you will Deposit that into a separate checking account so you can keep account of that money and pay your creditor with that money. This will lower your debt and could lower your monthly payment as well to that creditor. But let's just keep paying the creditor the same monthly amount because you're paying them 12% interest and the insurance is only charging you five. So it's in your best interest to get rid of that creditor fast so that 12% interest isn't bleeding you. At the end of the second year, then let's take a look at what happens if we have you keep paying that $200 a month in premium on that life insurance policy. Now you have $1,441 of cash value, and you only have a debt of $424.47. So if you'll take the money out of the policy that you need, the insurance company is going to charge you $91.28 in interest, they're gonna pass the money you need to pay off your creditor. You pay off your creditor, and that leaves you with $925.25 still in your insurance policy. All of you know that life insurance is the proverbial race between the tortoise and the hare. I want to be the tortoise in life, don't you? Comparing the first two methods of either or, what really happens over the lifetime of this policy compared to those first two methods? So let's take a look. When we look at the numbers, here's what happens. In the first method, at month 19, you have 38.57 of savings and 37.56 of debt. At 29 months, you have the 59.72 of savings and zero debt, and so on. As we go through this, each time you can see the compounding interest and in, in your deposits now of $600 a month after your debt is gone is growing the conventional method one savings account. So at 30 years, you've reached a total of $275,089. Well, let's look at conventional method two. This is the one that everyone says is so much better than conventional method number one. So it must be tremendously better. Let's compare the numbers. Here we go. Absolutely, at 19 months you have zero debt, so we're ahead of method number one, but you only have $405 of savings. At month 29, your debt is still zero, and you've got $6,400 and 57 of savings. And as we go out, we can see this is compounding a little bit faster but not that much. It's not even $900 more over a 30-year period of time. You would think the way the gurus and the wizards all jump up and down about this that it would be so much more powerful than that. Now, I prefer the latter method over either of these two conventional first methods, and you will too after you look at this. And here's the key that you didn't have to work any harder to make this happen. So let's watch and see. At month 19, you have some savings called cash values. You have some debt, but you've got almost $85,000 of benefit that's going to be there for someone should something tragic happen to you. Then at month 29, we have zero debt. We have a nice savings account of almost $3,000, 2941, and we have a death benefit now that's nearing 240,000. 
And as we go along here now, uh, when our debt's eliminated and we can contribute more to the policy premiums, then what happens is our death benefit grows and our cash value outpaces either of the two conventional methods. So by the time we reach to year 30, uh, year 30 here, month 360, you have nearly $75,000 more of liquid cash value than you did in savings in either of the other methods. But look over here, you're leaving almost a million dollars of benefit to those you love and care about. Well, here at Life Benefits, we're proud to be called your wealth team. Helping you understand and practice the both concept in your life instead of just an either or option. Because we believe that the more money that you control, the more value you can produce for yourself and for other people that you love. This is why we offer the free download of our book, Prescription for Wealth. All you have to do is text capital LBI and send it to 22828. Then give me a call because I can help you. Now before we leave you today, I want you to show you a graph of the difference between the two conventional methods and the IBC method. You can't even tell the difference in the two conventional lines there because they're superimposed on each other almost identically. But the green line of thinking both, IBC, brings you out way ahead in cash values and that almost million dollars of death benefit can't be matched anywhere.